Hey everyone, welcome back to this video showing how we can live switch models in production without having any downtime and using FastAPI and MLflow. What we will be doing is create two separate web services. The first one we are going to call the router and it has a couple of endpoints exposed, one being the reload one that basically reloads a specific model and this will spin up a Docker container with the actual serving of the model that is going to pull the model from the registry, MLflow registry. And the second one is the actual prediction that will predict a given uh, item that we are going to pass. Uh, the second one that we are going to create is the model serving. So this one has a couple of methods, a couple of endpoints, one being ready that says if the serving layer is ready or not. And again, the predict that is basically identical to the other one, as the other one is basically delegating the prediction to the actual serving. And finally, we will have MLflow that what we will do is I have already registered uh, a model to uh, ver with ver version one, version two, refer back to the previous video to see how to do that. And we will switch stage from maybe archive to production, and we will see how the transition uh, comes to life on our router. Before we jump straight into the code, let's see what exactly we want to achieve here. So if I do a Docker PS right now, we will see that I have two running containers, one being the MLflow server and one being the main IO. If I go back to uh, our router and I hit the reload endpoint with the name of the model we wish to reload, which in this case is the model hello, as specified by the MLflow registry, you see name hello, and I execute. What will happen is that I will be returned with an address, localhost 8238. And if I do hit the predict item and try it out with something like hey, and execute, we should be seeing an error right now. And as a matter of fact, we do, because that model is not yet ready. So if I do go on the address that was previously generated, 8238, 8238, indeed the model is there, but is it ready yet? If I execute, I see that it's the ready is equal to false. So what the router is actually doing is keeping a stack of models that has that were previously spinned up, and this trying to see if they're ready or not. If they are indeed ready, it's gonna basically delegate that prediction to that model. So if I execute again the ready, now it's true, and go back to the actual router prediction and I execute, we will see hey254, which basically means that right now the model is ready and the router is uh, routing requests to that model. So now let's go to the MLflow UI and hit version 2. Now as you can see this is in stage archived so if I transition this to production and hit OK and then go back to the router and hit reload with the same model name you see that a new container has been created 81 on port 8187 and indeed if I do a docker ps I do get created 13 seconds ago but if I do hit the predict item with hey, and previously I got hey254, and I execute again, you see that I still get hey254. And this is actually what we want in the, fir in the first 50 seconds in which the model is, is being spinned up, because that means that we are not having any downtime with the transition from one model version to the other. So right now, the old, the, the new requests are still being routed to the old one because the new one is not yet ready. But as soon as these 50 seconds have passed, that is the sleep that I've put in the code and we will see in a second, you see that magically we are getting hey 488. So effectively, now we are hitting that new endpoint, which is the one that was spinned up in uh, later on, and that actually has this address 8187.
So now that we have seen what we want to do, let's see how we can actually do that. So let me go to my IDE. And first of all, I would like to shut down the um, router. And as I shut down the router, sorry, router, not, uh, not to serve, and I hit shutting down, we will see that actually this one tears down the containers as well. So if I do Docker PS, the two containers that were previously there are actually gone. And this is what I wanted to do before. And we'll show you in a second how I did that. Uh, we can also close this serve. We don't need this at all. Uh, and let's just go through the code. So let's start from the router. The router has a couple of endpoints, one being the reload one and one being the predict. Um, also, it has an on-event shutdown that we will see in a second. The first thing that it does, it creates a, a fast API uh, app, then has a stack of models, uh, models endpoints, and then has a Docker client that is initialized from the environment. What does the reload actually do? It's gener it generates a random port, then it spins up a container with tag serve latest, targeting port 8000 and exposing one random gen randomly generated port from 8000 to uh, 8500. 8, then it puts that container on the same network of the MLflow registry, because in that way we can refer to the MLflow server directly using the DNS provided by Docker. We will see that in a second on the serving layer. Finally, we inject some environment variables and hopefully these should be quite familiar to you if you have looked at the previous video, so I won't go too much into that. And finally, we hit detach equal to true, otherwise this will basically uh, stop here and will not return anything. And finally, we return the endpoint that was just created, which is localhost and that randomly generated port. So basically, all this does is create a container with the serving layer and returns the endpoint uh, there. Uh, finally, it appends that uh, container ID that was created and the actual endpoint to the model's endpoint stack. So here we are creating a tuple containing container ID and endpoint and we will see in a second why we need these two information. Let's go to the predict, uh, which should be quite simple to understand. So the first thing is latest ready model is equal to none. And then we iterate over the endpoints in reverse order. So let's try to understand why we are doing this. So suppose that we are initially without any model so we have like zero models and the stack is basically empty so it's something like this then we hit reload and a first model that's called version one is loaded there so what we want is that at, the, at that point we want v1 to start predicting right so this one should basically delegate the prediction to v1 but if we do the model switching and we hit reload again what we will have is v1, v2. But what we want is to actually hit v2 first, and only if v2 is not actually available, we fall back to v1. So we do need to iterate in reverse order this uh, list, which is actually, we are treating it as a stack. So basically we, we iterate from the end till the beginning, if v2 is available, then we say latest ready model is equal to v2. Otherwise, we fall back to v1. And if even v1 is not available, then we basically say, yeah, we have no model that is actually ready. And we throw the 500. So what we do is start iterating for model in model endpoints in reverse order. And then we get the container ID that we don't really care about at this point and the actual endpoint. And we try to uh, get that ready endpoint that we have seen before. So if the model is ready, then the latest ready model is equal to endpoint. And it iterates over all the endpoints until the list is basically uh, all iterated. And if not latest ready model, we throw the 500. Otherwise, we just delegate that prediction to the actual 
model serving layer. Finally, if uh, when the, the actual shutdown event is being triggered, we go over the model endpoints again, but this time we're interested in the containers IDs and basically we stop them one by one. This is just a convenience method. Method You might not want to do this maybe, uh, depending on how you're uh, thinking of using this uh, router. Now let's jump to the model serve, which should be quite straightforward. Um, so we have a couple of endpoints, which is the ready and the predict. Let's first go uh, through model actually. So the model itself, it's a, a, a wrapper class that basically doesn't do that much. In the constructor, it basically gets the model name from the environment. And this is actually something that I didn't mention, but if we go back to the router, if you notice in the environment variable, I have injected an environment variable called model which is the actual model that we want to reload. So from here, using query strings, we are passing the string of the model name that we want to reload. In our case, it was hello. So what we are saying is we get hello from the endpoint and we inject it as an environment variable inside the container that we are spinning up. So if we go to the model serve, we're getting that model and we'll, we are setting self.modelName equal to model name. The stage I set as default to production. Here you can play around with it and maybe you can even inject this one. And finally, the tracking URI is also something that you might want to inject. Otherwise, it's defaulting to localhost 5000. In here, I am using MLflow 5000 because as I mentioned, I have put this in the same Docker network as the server. Finally, we have this load method. Uh, the load method method basically it, it's it's the reader that we have seen the last time on the other video. So what it does is basically load the model, and then I have put this sleep fifty. I did this just to simulate a model that maybe is a bit slower to load. Right now we are using a model that basically does absolutely nothing. But maybe if you're loading some heavier model, it doesn't load instantaneously, but it takes a bit of time. Finally, once the sleep is done and the load is done, we say self.ready is equal to true. And what the actual ready method now should be quite easy to understand is basically saying, is the model ready? So it's saying um, wrapper.ready, where wrapper is just an instance of the model itself. And Finally, the prediction is basically just getting the model inside the wrapper and predicting the item that is being passed. When we actually spin up the server, so since this is the code is read sequentially by the Python interpreter, what will happen is that we have the app that is being created, the wrapper that is being created, we register the endpoints, and finally I spin up a thread that targets wrapper.load. So this one is being loaded in the background by a thread so that in the meantime, we are still able to hit the ready endpoint. And there you have it. it. That is all there is to it really, because what if we go back to the router and see the whole flow, we hit the, the reload. As soon as the reload is being hit, we spin up a new Docker container. This Docker container basically will uh, load this model serve code that will start the app, will start the, the model, and will start loading it. Then when the requests are coming to predict item, we will go through the stack from the end to the beginning. And so retrieving the latest version first and asking it to predict in case it is ready. And the ready endpoint from the model serve, it's returning false until the actual model is being loaded. So in that way, we can fall back to previous version of the models until the new one is ready, and we can have basically zero downtime. Now, of course, this is not something I'd put as is in production, but it gives a very decent idea on how you could implement a zero downtime model switch in production using MLflow. 
Before we jump to conclusion of this video, I just want to mention a couple of extra points that might be useful in case you want to reuse some of this code. The first one is that you could have a similar on event, uh, but with a startup event instead. And you do that by basically just having startup here and writing whatever code you want. And here we could actually reload the model the first time we spin up the router. So we could call the reload model with hello. And that should basically load the model as soon as the router is actually being uh, created. And another improvement point would be to actually delete old models uh, that are not needed anymore. So if you have V2 and V1 right here, and V2 is now ready, you don't really need V1 anymore. Um, in order to do that, um, if you would remove this one as is, you might encounter uh, a slight inefficiency. So you might want instead to use a DQ, um, a double-ended queue that basically allows you for O of one removal from the beginning of the list as well. Uh, but yeah, I think that once V2 is ready, isn't it, it's not really necessary to keep v1 there uh, otherwise the the more you start to, to you keep reloading you will keep a list of this models right here that you might not be needing anymore so yeah you might want to add a cleanup method somewhere and uh, the third thing that you could do is you could remove the reload model all along by having maybe a background task of sorts that maybe every 10 seconds or one minute checks if a new model is available. And uh, if that is the case, it spins up the container. Uh, so it runs this code only if a new model is available. So you connect the router as well to the ML flow server. Um, maybe we'll do that in the next video. Could be interesting to see. But yeah, in general, the reload model right now, it's something that we are kind of triggering manually. In the future, we could trigger automatically either with a timer or maybe some kind of external trigger by MLflow itself. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video and um, it was useful. So see you in the next one.